So, um, I'm finally back with Rob recording my videos. He did some of the earlier ones that are edited really well. He does this professionally, so I'm super excited. I got a lot of comments and people were like, oh, you're finally back, and I didn't realize everyone liked me so much, so that's kind of cool. But, so I feel like in the almost year hiatus I've taken that uh, a lot of the stuff that I've learned and a lot of the knowledge I've attained, I would put it out there for everybody rather than just a short Instagram post. So, in this I want to talk about anger. Because a lot in the spiritual community, people have this issue where they're like, oh, anger isn't love, and anger is awful to have, and anger is negative. And I completely disagree with that because I feel like anger is the very basis and the catalyst to our healing and to us fighting for ourselves. When we look at a situation or we have an emotional moment, some type of heartbreak, some type of devastation, and we look at it and we don't get angry, we're upset at first. And we stay upset and then we're told that eventually time will heal it all and we will eventually just become happy from it no you have to get angry to fight for yourself you have to get angry to fight for what is happening to you you have to get angry to fight for your soul and your emotions and the you that you couldn't protect because a lot of what happens when we go through some type of trauma, and I could especially say it from my sociopathic ex and a lot of what I've been through, is anger is the reason I even wanted to fight for myself. If I stood there and I just stayed a victim for as long as I wanted to, I would probably have some sort of drinking problem, I would have depression issues, I would have anxiety, because I wouldn't be meeting the emotions that were validly coming up. When people say that there's no such thing as dark energy or there's no such thing as negative energy and as long as you have God in your heart or source in your heart, then there's no room to have any anger or darkness or sadness. And I'm sorry, I called bullshit. That is not something that I agree with in any way, shape or form. You can disagree with me and that's okay. But I have done enough of my own healing and done enough healing on other people to know that the anger is what we need. The anger we need to meet. We need to see that anger because that anger is going to be why we decide that we say no more. It's going to be why when at the end of sadness, it's it's like the, the stages of grief, the stages of anything. and. You have that sadness, you have that depression, and then you have that anger, and you're allowed to be angry. You're allowed to say, fuck this, or this person really hurt me, or I hate that person. A lot of people will say hate is a very strong word, but if it comes up in that moment and it's a valid feeling you're feeling, explore it. You have to see why you feel that way. If you passionately love somebody, certain words and certain actions and certain feelings are very valid and you need to allow yourself to feel whatever you feel in order to heal it and release it. Too often people tell others, oh, the only way to be happy is to have self-love. And I always say, well, how the fuck are people supposed to have self-love? They don't even know how to get it. They don't even understand how they grow to love themselves. Why don't they love themselves? They have no idea that much of their life they've been sitting and allowing others to dictate how they feel. From the time we're young, we have our parents telling us how to feel. In one of my previous videos, I talk about self-love and where we begin to lose it. Then we grow up, we start dating, we start having friends, and we lose every sense of who we are because we're consistently trying to just fit in. We are consistently making ourselves somebody else for other people. So, in that, how are you supposed to love yourself if you don't even know who you are? Pain, heartbreak, sadness is the only way I've ever discovered who I was. Being emotionally broken, being damaged, having people hurt me, having people abuse me, that has been the only way I've discovered who I was. And the reason I discovered who I was in those instances was never because I was so sad, never because I was so depressed. It was because I allowed the depression and the victim mentality to take its time but then I knew when it was done and I got so pissed. I got so pissed at all the people in my life that have ever taken advantage of me, made me feel a certain way that I didn't ask to feel. I got pissed at anyone that's ever degraded me, my ex for abusing me, saying all these awful things to me. I got mad and when I got mad, that was how I started to heal because I met my anger and I allowed myself to have that anger. I allowed myself to look at that anger and say, you have every right to be angry that someone took advantage of you. On the quantum plane, and I talk about this uh, quite a lot because I do a lot of quantum understanding, quantum healing, time is existing all at once, the issues that we still have is still existing on the quantum timeline. So I always say when I go back 
and I get angry for even a 13 year old Alex, that is how I'm saving her. That is how I'm helping her. I get so angry that I wasn't able to protect her that I allow myself to dive back into those painful memories and I allow myself to help myself to heal. I allow myself to allow those issues to come to the surface. I allow myself to feel exactly how I'm feeling in that moment because how you feel in a moment is how you and your perception are reacting to something. How you react to something is how you are feeling in that very moment and that is who you truly are. So if you are not allowing how you truly feel in a certain minute to be how you feel and you tell it no, that's you abusing yourself. You are telling yourself you are not allowed to feel a certain way and you are telling yourself that you are invalid and you are wrong. Further abusing you, just like the abuse or some type of pain that you've been through. And then you don't trust yourself. You teach yourself that your feelings of pain are invalid. Your feelings of anger are invalid. And then the victim role stays there for far longer than you want it to. It turns into other sources. It turns into other ways of coping. It turns into losing yourself. It turns into going into an almost psychosis and not being able to get out of the moment and of the heartbreak or emotional trauma that you have. You sit there and you fixate on stuff and you can't get over it because you did not meet every which way of that pain and what it was telling you. You need to go into every pain you have and look at it seven different ways, if not more. You need to look at why did this happen? Why did I feel that way? Why did that make me sad? Why did that give me heartbreak? Because if you really look at it, when you get let down by somebody or somebody hurts you, you are more hurt by yourself that you allowed it to happen. So you're allowed to even be angry with yourself. You're angry that this person didn't meet your expectation and then you got hurt in the mix and then you're misplacing a lot of your anger, a lot of your sadness onto the person that hurt you, but you also had an expectation of somebody that you probably didn't take 10 minutes to really know. And you didn't want to see things the way that it was because you had an idea in your head because you don't know yourself. Sometimes in life we need our illusions shattered and we need things to go not as we expected because we need to be hurt. And being hurt and pain is the only way that we actually start to know who we are. But in allowing yourself to get angry over what happened, when you're angry that something was unfair or something was unfair or unjust towards you, you're allowing yourself to feel how you want to feel rather than how you think you should feel. You are allowing yourself to be angry for what happened to you, angry for not knowing better, angry for not being able to protect yourself maybe. And that anger will eventually be what brings you to your truth and helps you understand and helps you get out of the sadness and out of the, how could this happen to me? Why did this happen to me? And it brings you to the, well, I'll never let this happen to me again. And then you get rid of that anger phase and it goes into the balance of it. And you find, okay, this happened to me. I allowed this to happen. I forgive myself. I forgive this situation because now look at where I am. If we don't allow every emotion that we are feeling in every situation to unfold and unrise and we don't meet it and we don't sort through it and we don't understand it, that is how we become further abused. That is how we stop knowing who we are at all. That is how we become even more codependent. That is how we become even more depressed. That is how we become people that don't trust our path. That is how we become people that are so anxiety ridden. We're afraid of the future because we did not deal with the past. We did not deal with the pain that was supposed to bring us to a certain place. We didn't deal with every emotion that we had in a situation. And I'm not saying be angry and get angry and hit something and get so mad. That's toxic anger. But if you feel that when you're alone and that's how you're releasing and you allow it to leave, you meet it and then you say, okay, this doesn't suit me anymore. I allowed myself to get angry. I'm fighting for myself. I'm fighting for what happened to me to myself because my expectations didn't allow something that I wanted to happen and in turn it hurt me. So you always have to understand, and I've said it a few times, your expectations onto another person and what you believe you want it to be and it turns out to be something so different, you have to understand that they are not all to blame. 
you allow the pain and you allow the sadness, you allow the anger, and then you allow the forgiveness. You have to explore everything that it taught you. And in exploring everything that it taught you, that is how you are coming to understand and learn why that had to happen. Maybe it mirrors something that happened to you when you were young. Maybe it mirrors something that you saw with your parents. Because I've said in a lot of videos, the way that either our opposite sex parent is and loving towards us is how we accept love. It's how we believe love to be. How you see love happen before you with your parents is how you accept love. So maybe in these instances where we have to feel anger and we have to feel sadness, we are also getting angry for the child that deserved to see better love. We are getting angry for the child that should have had a parent around. We are getting angry for the child that had to teach themselves how to be an adult. That anger is telling you everything. It has so many things stored in it that you need to unlock and you need to remember certain things that happen from the very beginning things that brought you to your expectations of now, things that brought you to your perceptions of now, things that the love that you saw as a child is the love that you think you should be having right now. So you find people that purposely hurt you or you find people that say you had an absent parent so you don't actually understand what the opposite love of that parent is and you have those issues, you're forever searching for somebody of power you have to eventually get angry. And it's okay to be angry with the people that are a part of your story that made you who you are. But eventually after that anger, you find the greatest forgiveness and appreciation for those people for everything they were and everything they weren't. Starting with you, starting with your emotions, starting with your feelings, starting with you being angry enough that you are going to fight for yourself so hard that you are never going to let something take you down. Instead, you're going to allow it to let you rise and you're going to meet every emotion you feel in every instance that you have for the rest of your life and you're going to know exactly why it happened and exactly how to heal it. I hope everybody has enjoyed this. Um, I hope everybody can understand the message I'm trying to convey. Uh, everything that I talk about, everything that I say, it's it's almost like I feel like I had to go through such dark things in order to be a bringer of light to a world that, you know, like I said, the spiritual community is like, no, everything is love and light. And no, you're not allowed to be angry. Or, you know, certain groups that I've, I've encountered people that are parts of like these other groups of sp spiritual uh, branching. And they're like, but if everything is love, then nothing can be dark and you can't feel those things. And I guarantee you those people are the ones that are harboring the most oppression because they aren't meeting all their needs. So please just believe me when I say meeting every one of your emotions in any instance is how you are going to be get better, is how you are going to get better and it's how you are going to heal. It's how you are going to become the next version of you. Have a good one and uh, I look forward to making the next one. actually have no idea of how things are supposed to go. You are consistent, you are- Did <laughs> that. Cut!